The Rebel Capitalist Show. So many people think that the real estate market is similar to the stock market. You know, I see this in my comments all the time. I'm sure you get it as well, where people say, well, I'm just, I don't want to buy a house right now. I'm just going to sit on the sidelines and wait for the market to crash, quote unquote. And then I'm going to go in and buy for 50 cents on the dollar. I'm going to buy things when they get cheap again. But people need to realize, and I'm not saying that's a bad strategy, but you need to realize that the housing market or real estate in general, I'd assume commercial is the same. It doesn't just flip on a dime. You know, you go back to 2006 when we hit the peak, we didn't bottom out until 2012. It took six years. And, you know, Hartman's got a good way of saying that. He says it's because the, uh, the buyers are always looking through the windshield driving the car they're looking ahead and the sellers are always looking in the rearview mirror they're always looking at what prices were and the buyers are looking at what prices are going to be and it takes a long time for those sellers to ratchet down their expectations (laughs) Uh, what's your experience been uh you know you've been doing this for decades how long does it usually take for real estate to turn and start going down yeah you know when we have a, a a big event it, yeah, so it's a great question. It, it depends on the sophistication of the seller, to be honest with you. So a buyer is always looking forward. They're looking, you know, they're saying, what's it going to be? So that's a great analogy. Uh, you know, as an example, you know, we were trying to buy stuff in Las Vegas recently. You know, obviously when, the, when Las Vegas got shut down pretty much mm. in the, the casino, you know, the number one employer in that area is of course the, you know, casinos right, and all the workers right, around right. the casinos. All. So I'm like, this is a great time to go buy in Vegas. Well, the sellers were all like, looking back right and i'm looking forward i'm like well look at you you're you're sitting here with you, you know nobody's moving in and out your your occupancy is low and your your collections are low and they're holding tight and um mm-hmm. and so it you know it kind of depends on their pain point if they're highly leveraged like what you kind of mentioned before they're probably going to make a move but if they've got pretty good cash, they've owned the thing for a long time, let's say their debt coverage and their loan to values, maybe, uh, you know, significantly lower, like 40, 50 percent, then they're going to be fine. So like with Ross and I, my partner, our average loan to value on our whole portfolio, we have 10,000 apartments is, you know, right in the 50 percent range. Now, people mm-hmm. are like, are you crazy? Like, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you in the 75 to 80 percent? And obviously that would be hundreds of millions of dollars in cash for us if we did those cash out refis. But we want to be there. We personally want to be there because things happen, corrections happen, you know, um, and there's all kinds of stories around property management, uh, you know, that we can go on and on and on about that can affect occupancy, but the, this is just one more thing. And so right now it just really depends on the seller. If there, if a seller wants to get the hell out of Vegas, let's say they're selling, right, you know, right, right. But, but, but if they're working at, let's say the Mirage and, you know, they're still getting the stimulus money and all that kind of stuff, they're probably not. So it just really depends on, you know, the individual and the seller themselves. And, and there's been a fair amount of, as you know, it's been very, very interesting. But the the sales uh, at right now is waning right now because of the inventory and the construction costs, which are just going crazy right now. We're building four projects and we're getting killed on appliances and lumber and OSB board, which is the strand board and, and plywood and all those kinds of things that, you, you know, it's, 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 it's really jacking the costs. Yeah. I want to talk about inflation in a moment, but let's go back a moment. You were talking about, you know, seeing what's happening in Vegas and everything shutting down the number one employer being forced by the government to shut down and this kind of panic type situation that we were facing in the middle of 2020 that everyone remembers well. And Ken McElroy looks at that and says, I want to go buy. I'm getting greedy. I want to go buy. I want to go in there and put money to work. That's very counterintuitive. Uh, Most people would run away from that situation. And uh, whether you're investing in real estate, whether it's gold, whether it's uh, uh, currencies with bonds, stocks, doesn't matter. Uh, what I've seen, what I've noticed from all the guys and gals who do this really well, 
is they're able, what Jim Rogers says, they buy panic and they sell hysteria. So, uh, and you know, I know that you have so much experience that it might be easy for you now to go in and buy panic, but that's not natural. You, you got to kind of rewire <laughs> your brain, you know what I mean? Because we see that crash and we want to run. We want to get as far away from that as possible while you're running into the fire. How did you train yourself to uh, have that mindset to the point where you're willing to put quite literally hundreds of millions of dollars to work when everyone else is running for the hills? Um, it's a good question. I, I think that actually, um, well, I've been through a couple cycles and, and in the last cycle in 2008, I'll give you a great story. We, we went down to you. Uh, we went down to San Antonio and we bought uh, two or 3000 units down there during, um, you know, call it uh, oh, nine, 10, 11 ish somewhere mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. And, and we were buying them from the bank. So I bought a property from bank of America. And uh, now it, what that means guys is that bank of America loaned somebody money on this right, property. Right, right. And then that guy lost the equity and didn't have the occupancy or any any money left to even pay the debt and the bank defaulted foreclosed took the property back so it was an reo or real estate owned bank owned property and um and so i really wrapped my head around this probably 08 9 10 so it was a good 10 12 years ago you, you know, there's a process that happens, George, and, and these markets, they, they, they do come back and they can be resilient. So I, um, you know, and, and so when we were buying up, we, we bought that property, the, the, the loan on that property was 25 million. We, we got the bank to write it down 5 million, which means the bank took a loss. So the shareholders in the bank took that loss. Um, we got the loan for 20 and then the bank gave us the money to fix it. And, 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 and now that property, I think we're, we're into it for less than 30 million. You know, that property is just somewhere between 55 and $60 million today. We still own it. Um, and, and so, you know, I love to buy things that are broken. If you can find a broken deal and have the expertise and the management to be able to fix them, mm -hmm. then that's how you create, that's how you create value for yourself and for your, for your investors. And so, so for me, having i have i've had a lot of experience in las vegas before and i've watched the cycles it happened during 9 11. now a lot of people don't remember 9 11 but i was uh buying in las vegas right after 9 11 because the 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 we you know the the skies you know went dark and nobody could fly anywhere and right, and, and so, right. you know so the only way to get to vegas obviously um was to drive and so obviously it had a massive, massive impact. And so Vegas started to go through a correction as a result of that. It's the same thing that's going on in New York City right now. New York City will rebound. You know mm -hmm. that. I know that. Now, the question is, how long will it take? Uh, same thing with Seattle. I was just up in Seattle. I'm from that area. Uh, my mom and my family still lives there. And it's horrible to see what's happening. But business owners and people are moving out of there. And, and Chicago's the same way. San Francisco, L.A., you know, a lot of these. It's not news today that we're starting to see, you know, a lot of this happen. And the, 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 the governments that are run the well. Uh, the are, sorry, the best of uh, the states that are run the best, um, they will be resilient and they will come roaring back. And yeah, so that's my for, question, Kenny. How do you know that that any of the, those markets that you just mentioned, Chicago, as an example, how do you know that's not the next Detroit? Yeah, well, well, you know, Detroit was kind of pinned uh, underneath the Industrial Revolution, you know, which was car manufacturing. The audio right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. So, you know, uh, uh, a city like Seattle, Chicago, Detroit, or uh, and New York, they're very, very, very diverse. And, and so uh, now the question is, they will come back, George, but the question is, you know, how long? You know, a lot of it's going to be government policy. Yeah, right. A lot of it is going to be safety. I remember I flew back. Um, uh, actually, I was at a, an event with our governor in Arizona, and I was talking to Rudy Giuliani, and he walked me through how he cleaned up the city. Now, of course he was taking credit for it at the time, but there were a lot of people involved and this is way back, you know, obviously, but New York was also dangerous was a, dump. You know, a long time ago. Terrible. Yeah. 
And then, you know, through a lot of uh, policy and things like that, it, it, it kind of moved back. And, and obviously for the last, who knows how long, 10 plus years, I've been going back and forth there and never even thought about safety issues. But before that, it was a problem. And so now that's just kind of back to where it was. I don't know if you saw, but there was 5,300 police officers that left the New York uh, Police Department in 2020, 5,300. Mm -hmm. And, and so you start to see these things. And so those are, those are things as a real estate guy, I look at, you know, I right, look at right, those right. kinds of things because I'm like, okay, because people, what do they want? They want safety. That, mm -hmm. That's kind of underpins the whole thing. And I was supposed to go to New York last week and I actually canceled my trip as a result of the potential issues around, you know, they were like, 30 shootings or something, you know, that the, the, the weekend before. So I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to probably not going to go. And uh, I just yeah. don't want to be in the middle of anything. And there's been some, th some things going on there and I'm not trying to pick on New York, but the point is people, they vote with their feet and they vote with their pocketbook. And so yeah. they're going to go like, you know, which is why that governor of Florida, you know, is just killing it. Right. Yeah. You know, he's just uh -huh. saying we're, we're open you know, we're, you know, we're, we're standing behind our police and I don't want to get all political on this, but the point is people are moving, they're going to safety areas. And so that drives real estate period, you know? So when, when you know, we're buying in Texas right now, right now I have two big properties in escrow, uh, 80 million bucks, and um, we're going to close on the 18th of June. And the reason we're buying in Texas is because of the underpinning policies of it all. And people are moving there. You saw Elon Musk move there from, right, from right. California and there's, uh, you know, the CEO of Oracle moved there. And so, so you, you, you know, people will do that. I have a good friend of mine uh, moving there right now to Austin. And, and so what that does is it creates a supply issue or, and a demand issue in different markets. So as, mm -hmm. as, as, as cities and towns and counties and states make these different policies, and trust me, people vote with their pocketbook and their feet. And, and you know, no matter what, they're going to, they're going to try to go to great schools. They're going to go where it's safe and um, you know, and where there's jobs. And, yeah. and that's, that's and so, so when I look at those kinds of things, those, that's how we make decisions is is based on those kinds of demographics shifts